This is Jackson Rose with Physical Science Section 8. Here's my topic research on digital computers for January 27th. In 1939, Hewlett Packard was founded. David Packard and Bill Hewlett founded Hewlett Packard in a Palo Alto, California garage. Their first product was the HP 200A audio oscillator, which rapidly became a popular piece of test equipment for engineers. Walt Disney Pictures ordered eight of the 200B models to use as sound effect generators for the 1940 movie Fantasia. In 1942, the Atanasoff-Berry computer is completed. Built at Iowa State College, the ABC was designed and built by Professor John Vincent Atanasoff and graduate student Cliff Berry between 1939 and 42. The ABC was at the center of a patent dispute relating to the invention of the computer, which was resolved in 1973. The legal result was a landmark. Atanasoff was declared the originator of several basic computer ideas, but the computer as a concept was declared unpatentable and thus was freely open to all. This result has been referred to as the disinvention of the computer. In 1962, three students from MIT wrote Space War, considered the first interactive computer game. First played at MIT on DEX PDP-1, the large cope display featured interactive shoot 'em up graphics that inspired future video games. In 1964, IBM announced the System 360, a family of six mutually compatible computers and 40 peripherals that could work together. The initial investment of $5 billion was quickly returned as orders for the system climbed to 1,000 per month within two years. At the time, IBM released the System 360, the company was making a transition from discrete transistors to integrated circuits, and its major source of revenue moved from punch card equipment to electronic computer systems. In 1971, Ray Tomlinson sent the first email when he was supposed to be working on a different project. Tomlinson, who is credited with being the one to decide on the at sign for use in email, sent his message over a military network called ARPANET. When asked to describe the contents of the first email, Tomlinson said it was something like, what are you up? In 1972, Pong is released. In 1966, Ralph Baer designed a ping pong game for his Odyssey gaming console. Pong would revolutionize the arcade industry and launch the modern video game era. Two years later, researchers at the Xerox Palo Alto Research Center designed the Alto, the first workstation with a built-in mouse for input. The Alto stored several files simultaneously in Windows, offered menus and icons, and could link to a local area network. Although Xerox never sold the Alto commercially, it gave a number of them to universities. Engineers later incorporated its features into workstations and personal computers. In the mid-1970s, Steve Wozniak designed the Apple I, a single board computer. With specifications in hand and an order for 100 machines at $500 each from the bike shop, he and Steve Jobs got their start in business. In this photograph of the Apple I board, the upper two rows are a video terminal and the lower two rows are the computer. The 6502 microprocessor in the white package sits on the lower right. About 200 of the machines sold before the company announced the Apple II as a complete computer. Just one year later came the Apple II. It was an instant success when it released in 1977 with its printed circuit motherboard, switching power supply, keyboard, case assembly, manual, game paddles, AC power cord, and cassette tape with the computer game Breakout. When hooked up to a color television screen, the Apple II produced brilliant color graphics. In the early 80s, IBM introduced its PC, igniting a fast growth of the personal computer market. The first PC ran on a 4.77 MHz Intel 8088 microprocessor and used Microsoft's MS-DOS operating system. The use of computer-generated graphics in movies took a step forward with Disney's release of Tron in 1982. One of the first movies to use such graphics, computer animation accounted for about 30 minutes of the film. In 1983, Apple introduced its Lisa, the first personal computer with a graphical user interface. Its development was central in the move to such systems for personal computers. The Lisa's sloth and high price of $10,000 led to its ultimate failure. But Apple didn't give up. One year later, they introduced the Macintosh, the first successful mouse-driven computer. They sold it with a $1.5 million commercial during the 1984 Super Bowl. Based on the Motorola 68000 microprocessor, the Macintosh included many of the Lisa's features at a much more affordable price of $2,500. In 1986, Pixar is founded. Pixar was originally called the Special Effects Computer Group at Lucasfilm. The group created the computer animated segments of films such as Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan, and Young Sherlock Holmes. In 1986, Apple Computer co-founder Steve Jobs paid $10 million to Lucasfilm to purchase the group, and he renamed it Pixar. 
Over the next decade, Pixar made highly successful and even Oscar-winning animated films. And before you know it, we've got the latest and greatest gadgets and gizmos from the iPad to the PC to the laptop. Now let's go in detail on how a digital computer works. Silicon microprocessors have been the heart of the computing world for more than 40 years. In that time, microprocessor manufacturers have crammed more electronic devices into microprocessors. In 1965, Intel founder Gordon Moore predicted that microprocessors would double in complexity every two years. Since then, the number of electronic devices put on a microprocessor has doubled every 18 months. A PC is a general purpose tool built around a microprocessor. It has lots of different parts, including memory, a hard disk, a modem, and more that work together. General purpose means that you can do many different things with a PC. You can use it to type documents, send email, browse the internet, and play games. The microprocessor, also called a CPU, is in charge of processing data. How it will process data will depend on the program. The program can be a spreadsheet, a word processor, a game, anything. For the CPU, it makes no difference since it doesn't understand what the program is actually doing. It just follows the orders, called commands or instructions contained inside the program. These orders could be to add two numbers or to send a piece of data to the video card, etc. When you double click on an icon to run a program, here's what happens. First, the program, which is stored inside the hard disk drive, is transferred to the RAM memory. A program is a series of instructions to the CPU. Second, the CPU, using a circuit called memory controller, loads the program data from the RAM memory. Third, the data now inside the CPU is processed. And fourth, what happens next will depend on the program. The CPU could continue to load and executing the program, or could do something with the processed data, like displaying something on the screen. Short of a flashlight and very simple elementary electronic devices, most electronics have a digital computer of some sort. This session may be recorded.